Welcome to Freda Chando Analysis, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for your continued support. The president of the judiciary, Madam Martha Kome, is on the spotlight again. And this time round, the person who is dropping a bombshell is none other than lawyer Ahmed Nasir. You know, Nasir is a very close ally of uh, President William Ruto. And uh, Madam Martha Kome also uh, has a very good relationship with the, the president. And you will rarely see Ahmed Nasir criticizing that which President William Ruto likes. But today, Ahmed Nasir did a tweet that really indicted the character of Madam Kome and the judiciary. Madam Kome was officiating a conference in Kilifi, and this is what the lawyer had to say. Ahmed Nasir tweeted that a major conference on environment and land courts was opened today by CJ Matakome. But not a single presentation will be done on the biggest challenge facing our courts. Judges and magistrates taking bribes to give judgment to the highest bidder, sad at the judiciary. That was the tweet that lawyer Ahmed Nasir did. And as he was doing this, there was a major ruling that had just taken place. The ruling on the principal secretaries that was stopped by Judge uh, Mwita Mzioka. Because some days ago, the Law Society of Kenya had gone to court and they got reprieve when the court halted the vetting of the principal secretaries, secretaries that was taking place. Apparently, 51 nominees had been selected and they were scheduled to be uh, vetted into those several offices. And today, the ruling took place. And Judge Ndumanderi set aside the ruling that was made by her counterpart. And this is what she had to say. She ruled in favor of William Samoy Ruto. And she said that the Law Society of Kenya and the other petitioners rushed to court. And she was arguing that the Law Society of Kenya and the other pet uh, pet uh, petitioners should have waited for the process to take place, then challenge the outcome of that of the of, of the of what is taking place. Because the Public Service Commission had started vetting candidates. And so the judge was saying that the Law Society of Kenya should have waited for that process to take place so that by the end of it, they can now go to court and say that, you know, we want to challenge the process that had already started or the process that has been completed. And I'm just wondering if the judges again will not tell them that, why did you wait till this process is complete and then you want to challenge it? Why didn't you come earlier? And the biggest question that people are asking, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You know, Ahmed Nasir is a renowned lawyer. And for him to go in public and make such a tweet is something that is very ridiculous. There is something that he knows that we don't know. Because just uh, in the just concluded elections, Ahmed Nasir distanced himself from being part of the legal minds that were going to represent William Samoy Ruto. Everybody had expected that maybe Ahmed Nasir was going to lead or be part of the lead lawyers that were going to challenge the petition that had been presented by Rail Uding and team. But he tweeted and said, he actually told President William Ruto that the case at hand then was not between William Ruto and Raila Mulodinga. 
and he told him to open his eyes because apparently he was alleging that it was a case between the then president who still had the sword Uhuru um, Mugai Kenyatta and so he did not take part in it and when we, William Ruto when ruling was done on uh, Ruto's favor Ahmed Nasir came back and he started tweeting in favor of William Samoy Ruto now the ruling that was made today and the tweet that was made by lawyer came almost simultaneously and I was just wondering does it mean that uh, Ahmed Nasir is saluting that even the ruling that was made today was made in favor of the highest bidder and is he insinuating that the ruling that was made on August after the elections was made of the highest bidder because if this is what he's saying that he is just trying to say that the ruling the presidential ruling was done in favor of William Ruto because he was the highest bidder and he's also saying that even the ruling on the principal secretaries was made today to the highest bidder who is the president this tweet is very ridiculous but I just want us to look at the deeper significance of what is happening in the country I have seen big men who have got their cases in court being withdrawn our deputy president has always said that all the cases that were leveled against him were as a result of political witch hunt because he was supporting William Samoy Ruto then and all the cases have been withdrawn people like Aisha Jumwa are also lucky because their cases have been drawn today we are waiting for another ruling on the GMO when some Kenyans went to court to seek a reprieve and to seek legal redress the court set aside and, and halted the importation of the GMO but if anything that is happening in the country is uh, if what is happening in the country is anything to go by then we can expect nothing but a ruling in the favor of the highest bidder that is according to Ahmed Nasir and let me just say this if you conduct a survey today and ask Kenyans whether they have faith in the court they most probably will tell you no because when the courts halted the, the, the vetting of the principal secretaries we thought that okay uh, this time around they have started reading on parallel pages but today it has been confirmed that the friendship between the executive and the judiciary that was formed sometimes back is still going on the principal sectors is something that was going to be a major blow to the president because it is part of the cake that he wanted to dish out to his friends and the law society of Kenya went to court because they were arguing on three grounds they were saying that it did not meet the third third rule the the the, the that it did not meet the two-third gender rule because apparently it's required that in every institution there must be gender equity and they were saying that there were there were very few female nominees to the, 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 the candidates that were going to be vetted and the law society of Kenya was also arguing that out of the 51 candidates 13 were from Kikuyu nation and another 13 were from the Kalenjin nation and they were arguing that because 13 plus 13 that is 26 out of 51 and they were arguing that in a nation where we have about 40 or 50 something ethnic groups it means that if the two communities take the lion's share then this is going to be very biased considering that the other regions will not be represented and uh, the court said that this is a sacred function of parliament that the law society of kenya should hold their horses wait for the process to take place and then argue their case later i don't know what you think whether this is something that uh, should happen or whenever you feel aggrieved 
notwithstanding any time, any moment, you should go to court. And we are setting a very bad precedent, ladies and gentlemen. If anything that is uh, going to pit you against the judiciary is going to be ruled in favor of the of of of, of uh, if anything that is going to be pitting you against the executive must be ruled in their favor, then we are not getting it right because soon you we might find ourselves in a situation where the judiciary and the executive are in lo at, at loggerheads. What exactly will happen, ladies and gentlemen?